Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Snake Master. Today our journey has brought us to the heart of a dense forest. Here we can see a trail of elephant dung. Doesn't look very recent. I remember about 4 years ago when we were here, we had some exciting glimpses of wildlife. We got to see tiger foot marks, had a close look at a bison, we spotted samba deer and wild boar. The main purpose of the Snake Master team's trip here today is to let our viewers experience up close what we do. We have several different snake species with us. Today, we are releasing them in a place where they are best able to survive, letting them back into their natural habitat. The Snake Master team set off on this journey yesterday morning. We got here this morning after traveling for a day and night. Before we started from Trivandrum, we had received numerous calls from people who had spotted snakes in their homes or living premises. We went there and caught them. The weather has not been on our side on this journey. From the time we set off, it has been raining steadily. You can see that I am soaked. The rain is picking up. We can expect a raging downpour any time. Many dangers lurk in the forest during rains. It is the time elephants venture out into the open. The bison steps out of its jungle hideout when it rains. Well, here I can smell what is called the elephant smell. You must be wondering what elephant smell is. It is the distinct odor of elephant poop. See how right we were. Elephant dung looks fresh. It's probably been here less than an hour. Listen to those crunching sounds. Branches snapping. Clearly there are elephants around. Let's see if we can bring our viewers some interesting elephant footage. Look at this fruit. It's called the muti fruit. It is a bear's favorite. These are fruit remnants scattered here. Discarded by the bear, no doubt. Tastes like rambutan. It's not to everyone's taste. A bit sore. We can see bear paw marks on the tree. Scratches and nail marks all over. The bear usually hugs the tree and then plucks the fruit and eats it. Our expedition is through the wilderness. When we first arrived at the edge of the forest, we covered about 5 kilometers of terrain on foot braving the rain just to see if we would be lucky to spot any wild animals we got here at about 6 in the morning now it's 10 so we have been here for about 4 hours but no animal sightings unfortunately now we are on our way to another part of the jungle we are moving into a darker deeper part of the forest once we get there our friends here the python the cobras the vipers uh, we will set them free. The rain has not let up. As you can see, I am standing here in the rain. We had hoped to track down some wild creatures, but we are not attempting that as the rain shows no signs of easing up. As our viewers can see, there is thick forest cover all around. No signs of human habitation. Or visitors, this place is not easily accessible to people. Only forest officials come here for inspection. So now, we are all set to introduce our viewers to our friends here. You can see who is aggressive. Who raises its hood? They are in this sack here. Let's see what they are doing inside.
the cobra is known to be the deadliest venomous snake. They are commonly seen in our state. They go by different names. They are usually about 1 meter long and is about as wide as the human wrist. Cobras are either black or yellow. Cobras found in bushes are black and those in grasslands are yellow in color. The color differences is sometimes interpreted to be vital to their survival. Mangoes, eagles, vultures are their chief threats. Cobras can be easily identified with their distinct hood. The cobra hood is circular. It has two black spots at the front and two black spots at the back. The spots at the back are joined by a U-shaped pattern. A cobra flares its hood by expanding the ribs. A cobra with its hood spread is a majestic sight. When its hood flares, the cobra makes a unique noise. The raised hood is a technique to scare away enemies. The cobra detests human contact and therefore tries its best to avoid people. Cobra venom is extremely potent and can dangerously impair the human nervous system. The venom causes blood clots, which can prove fatal if emergency medical attention is not sought. We have about seven or eight cobras in front of us now. As soon as we let them loose, some of them crawled away. Those could be anywhere around here. The others are, as you can see, standing proudly. I should say aggressively. There are four females here. I don't think our viewers have ever had the opportunity to see so many cobras at a time, all with their hoods up in full display. Usually, when we release cobras, they are allowed to crawl away and hide. We don't want to trouble them anymore. Let them go wherever they want to and live in peace. While we have been talking here, one of the cobras has slithered away and hidden in the engine of our vehicle, the Kaumudi TV vehicle. Let me see about getting him out. We have released about 50 to 70 snakes today. We have several more to free, pythons, cobras and vipers. We are now moving further inside the woods. The rain shows no signs of abating, so that will put a damper on things. But we won't let that slow us down. Let's be on our way. 